92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk. So the Safety Act went into effect back in 2021, at least elements of it. Not the cash bail issue. That was postponed in the legislation for the start of this year. That's been put on hold by the Illinois Supreme Court after dozens of state's attorneys from across the state sued to block implementation of the Safety Act. Now, the Safety Act was a very sweeping, comprehensive bill that dealt with all kinds of different aspects of not just the criminal justice system, but also law enforcement. So starting this year, there are now requirements that police start lining up getting body cameras all across the state. And uh, clarifications include that body cameras don't have to be for uh, supervisory positions or for clerks or anything like that. So they made clear as to who exactly is going to have to wear body cameras. But with that, it's going to come extra cost. So that's one aspect of the Safety Act, plus some police training uh, elements that were part of the Safety Act uh, in effect now. But the no cash bail issue. Uh, That was heatly, hotly, a hot topic, heated debate uh, during the uh, November general election. And uh, the questions about who was going to be able to be held pre-trial was definitely top of mind for a lot of politicians. And it got to the point where even Governor J.B. Pritzker had to acknowledge that uh, it wasn't clear. And he pushed for amendments to the Safety Act pre-trial fairness provision. And lawmakers came back during veto session, and on December 1st, they passed a 300-page amendment to the bill and ultimately led to uh, changes, allowing for a broad net of detainable offenses in the Pretrial Fairness Act uh, and saying that uh, people who are a threat to others and the community can be held pending trial. So proponents of the Safety Act, they say that uh, it needs to be fair. People who are of lesser means need to be able to get out of jail pending trial. uh, And that's really the impetus of what they they have uh, uh, in their support for the Pretrial Fairness Act, saying you're innocent until proven guilty. And you absolutely are innocent until proven guilty. Uh, But sometimes crimes of a heinous nature, uh, they they lead to judges saying, you know what, you're not going to get bail. Uh, You're going to have to sit here pending trial. Uh, So the the discretion is up to the judge. So you had dozens of states' attorneys sue, and that lawsuit was consolidated into one in Kankakee County. Kankakee County had to delay their hearing on this multiple times because of the legislature's actions modifying it. So they heard it finally uh, last month. Then a week after, the judge ruled a mixed ruling, saying that the uh, prosecutors uh, from across the states did not prove their case that the Safety Act uh, was was passed without public hearing. Uh, the The judge also said that prosecutors did not prove their case that uh, the Safety Act violated the single subject rule. But the judge did say that the Pretrial Fairness Act, the no cash bail provision of the Safety Act, violates the state constitution's victims' Uh, the separation of powers. All right, so we're back. Uh, violated the, the the separation of powers and something that very much was a uh, concern for prosecutors uh, across the state. So here we are now. We've got uh, the the judge in Kankakee County uh, declaring that the Safety Act was unconstitutional, and then the. Illinois Attorney General appealed directly to the Illinois Supreme Court. And in that appeal, the Illinois Supreme Court had to clarify that, yeah, we're going to actually stay this, not just for the 64 counties that sued, but for the entire state to ensure that there's consistency across the state when it comes to how uh, pretrial processes are taking place. Uh, So now we have a, a, a little bit of an indication here that the Illinois Supreme Court is set to release some kind of schedule. I reached out to the Illinois Supreme Court and a spokesperson said that they expect a briefing schedule for the no cash bail challenge to be finalized either today or tomorrow, Friday. Once the briefing schedule is set, 
they said that we should know when oral arguments will take place. So we kind of know now uh, as to uh, when we might find out when we're going to actually have some clarity as to whether or not no cash bail is going to take effect. Governor J.B. Pritzker was asked about this yesterday, and uh, he, of course, reacted to the Illinois Supreme Court putting a stay or halting implementation of no cash bail. And uh, here's some of what he had to say yesterday uh, when asked about, uh, you know, what's going on here. Sure. Well, just to clarify, um, the the decision by the Kankakee judge was about the Pretrial Fairness Act, which is a piece of the Safety Act. Um, And the rest of the Safety Act has gone into effect, much of it already before January 1. uh, And, and, you know, and obviously, uh, you know, I signed the law and the legislators voted for it. And there is, I think, a common and comfortable belief that uh, it is constitutional. Uh, but, you know, the court system will, um, you know, make a ruling on it through the Supreme Court uh, sometime in the next few months. I'm disappointed uh, that there's a delay in the implementation. Um, j- justice shouldn't be delayed, and uh, we want our neighborhoods to be safer. And uh, putting the Pretrial Fairness Act into effect will make our neighborhoods safer. Well, then we'll come back at it. You know, we want to we're going to continue to focus on public safety, uh, on making sure that, uh, you know, in in my view, someone who's wealthier shouldn't just be able to buy their way out of jail uh, when they've committed a violent crime, when someone who's poor can't, uh, you know, hasn't committed a violent crime and and will sit in jail. So uh, the whole purpose here is fairness. um, And I think that we will continue to fight for that. I mean, I think those of us who Uh, believe in this, um, know that there's even more work to do. uh, But I I am comfortable and confident that this is constitutional. So uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker saying he's comfortable and confident that ending cash bail through the legislature is constitutional. Now, the judge in Kankakee County said that if the legislature wanted to end cash bail, what they should have done is posed the question to the electorate as they did with, say, the labor amendment that just passed, as they did with the uh, change to the uh, income tax that was proposed that failed, as they did with the lockbox. Two one seven six two nine seven nine seventy. That's the phone number. Good morning. You're on WMAY. I got a couple of things, Greg. First of all, Fat Boy, not you, Fat Boy Pritzker. Life ain't fair. To it. Life ain't fair. Plain and simple. We can't put everybody on the same pedestal. We can't. And for us to go and treat our criminals with respect is beyond. Like I am. I am. Uh, I am beyond. Like ready just to. Well, let me let me let me push back on you a bit, and I appreciate the call. We got full phone lines, uh, but listen, people are innocent until proven guilty, and that's really where the proponents of ending cash bail are coming from. But you've got in the state constitution an element that says that uh, you have to have surety, and if you're going to issue bond, and uh, surety has traditionally been a monetary value of sorts. Uh, so again, the Kankakee County judge saying that if the legislature wanted to change that, they should have posed the question to the, uh, the to the voters instead of doing it unilaterally, crossing that line into the judiciary uh, from the, the legislature. So again, that, that question of separation of powers. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Yeah. Hey, Greg. How's it going? Good. I, I just, you know, I sat there and listened to the Pritchard statement and I just I really am trying to figure out one logical explanation of how letting people out of here makes the streets safer. And, and I can't come up with one. Yeah, it's it's a, it's an interesting thing that uh, the governor has said even uh, during the election as to uh, you know making the streets safer by um, uh, allowing for low level offenders to to get out pre trial, uh, but it's his insistence and he's uh, he's got the political capital behind him with the state legislature. We'll see if that carries through on the uh, Illinois Supreme Court. Good morning, you're on WMAY. Hey, morning, Bishop. Hey, hey quick quick off talk topic comment then I'll go on about the safety act but uh, my personal opinion with the news whoever writes it needs you really should try and keep 
or politics out of it, or at least make it less obvious? Yeah, the uh, the the uh, moniker election denier. If you're going to apply that to one person, then you have to apply it to all the Democrats who also denied the 2016 election. But yeah, no, I hear you. Um, that's not my uh, bag. So uh, <laughs> I, 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 go I, ahead. I, on, go I, ahead on the Safety Act, though. The Safety Act. I find kind of find it ironic that you know Pritzker's talking all this about making our neighborhoods safe and our communities safe, but isn't there a provision in the Safety Act where? Police will not remove trespassers from your residence or from your business. They did change that in the 300-page amendment that they uh, they passed that says that police can remove somebody trespassing, but only after issuing a citation. And once issuing that citation, if the individual does not leave the premise, then they can remove that individual. Uh, or they can remove the individual if they're suffering some kind of uh, uh, mental health episode or something to that effect. So they did modify that. But you can only remove somebody if they actually uh, get a citation first. And that was a major concern that some people had. All right, uh, going to take one last call here. 217-629-7970. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Good morning, Greg. Hey. Well, I was calling to ask you the same question that the gentleman prior to your last caller, how is this making our neighborhood safer? And now I'm, I have, I formed another question. Uh, exactly what kind of people living in Illinois voted for Pritzker? I mean, he's obviously not what anybody needed, what anybody, but they wanted him. But I mean, that's, you know, people of Illinois need to be held accountable because we're putting politicians in that say things that make no sense and yet we give them such power yeah uh you know you look at the electoral map and uh looks like cook county drives a lot of the statewide politics uh and i don't know if that's gonna be rectified anytime soon uh, unless there's a candidate from maybe the republicans who can bring about uh some some coalition and some common ground with uh uh, voters across the political spectrum so we shall keep an eye on that and see what happens in the future